Welcome to a tutorial on our indoor lighting calculation tool. In this session, we'll take an introductory look at this tool, providing general insight on its functionality. The goal is not to cover every aspect of the tool, rather the most common elements to help you quickly become more comfortable using this tool. Okay, we are now in our indoor lighting calculation tool. The tool itself includes four top level controls. They are luminaire, space, layout, and settings. Setting provides little to no value for most users, so this will be excluded from today's tutorial. Each of these top level controls has a corresponding secondary row of additional inputs that support that top level selection. We'll explore that as part of our example. All right, so we are gonna start with a luminaire selection. So here we can simply engage with the drop down box and find the fixture that we wanna consider for our design. Today we're going to assume that we have an industrial application and we're looking for a high bay fixture uh, for this application. So let's go ahead and select this 27,000 lumen high bay fixture. And as we make our selection, you'll notice the tool will continually update as our design is changed. The only other thing we may consider in the luminaires tab is a light loss factor. Here the default is 1.00, so it assumes initial lumens. If we wanted to account for lumen depreciation over time, we could put a value of less than one in this uh, field. For our example, we're gonna assume initial uh, lumen, so we'll go ahead and, and leave that unchanged and move on to the space. We do have some defaults for the size of the space, and let's say for our industrial application, our space is 300 feet by 220 feet, and let's say we have 30 foot ceilings. The default for the work plane height is two and a half feet, so this assumes 30 inches from the um, above the finished floor is, is where we're gonna take our calculations, and maybe that's where the task is being performed, so that's kind of the area that we're interested in. It also defaults to a, a foot and a half of uh, suspension from the ceiling. We'll, we'll leave that unchanged as well, but certainly you could change those if, if you desired. The other thing we can consider in the space tab is reflectance. So the default is some common reflectances for ceiling, wall and floor. If you were to change these, it's gonna influence your foot candle levels. Um, again, we're gonna keep these common defaults unchanged. The next thing we're gonna consider is the layout itself. And you can see that the recommendation has been for 88 fixtures uh, based on the size of our space and we're getting 41 minimum uh, foot candles. We can change this. So let's say in our application where we wanna look at 30 foot candles and making that change, it'll update, and now we went from 88 fixtures down to 70. This might be good uh, for new construction projects where I have a lot of um, ability to, to customize the amount of fixtures to optimize it based on the, the size of the space, but let's assume we have an existing application where there's, there's 56 fixtures in the location. So I can change the luminaires to 56, and you can see now it's defaulting to the nearest quantity and it's telling us that based on the size of our space and the layout that it wants to give us is that you know 54 fixtures would yield 25 foot candles. Well that's below the 30 that I'm interested in um, and I also want to use 56 fixtures because again that's the number of locations currently in the space. So let's go ahead and change the illuminance back to the 30 foot candle minimum. You could also do maximums but here we're, we're interested in 30 foot candle minimum and within the layout tab I can actually change this to eight rows of, uh, let's say seven fixtures. And when we make that change, and assuming this is similar to the spacing we have in our application, you see that we, we went up a little bit, right? We added two fixtures and our foot candles increased slightly, but it's still below the 30 foot candles that we're targeting. So this shows that we probably don't have enough light coming out of this fixture, and if we do have another fixture that produces more lumens, maybe that kind of gets us there. So the other thing we can do is we can go back to our luminaire, and we can update our, our selection. So now we're gonna look at the 33,000 lumen product, and everything else we have, all the parameters we've laid out will remain unchanged, and as this updates, it'll show us that increasing that lumen package uh, gets us to 31 foot candles. So now we're we're very close to the 30 that we were targeting, and this appears to be the winning uh, selection. A couple other things you can do, you can change the, the view of the, uh, of the 
um, layout itself. So when you're working on it, there's one preferred versus another. You can also grab this, right, and I can move this around and I can orientate this. I can also use my mouse and roll it in or out to change the, the size of that dimension. If I want to share this, I can simply click this icon and I can create a link that I could include with an email that I send out or I could send an email right from the site uh, of the design. The other thing you can do is you can actually print out a copy of the, uh, the design if you so desire. So here I have all the information about the, the design parameters that were entered and I can personalize it uh, with maybe a job name. There's also some customizable footers at the bottom. Maybe I put date, maybe I put my name of my business, um, maybe who did the design. All those things are possible. I can also engage with um, these drawings. I can change the size. I can move them around to what I think is most meaningful um, for the design that I'm working on. And there you have it. That's the review of our indoor lighting calculation tool. I hope you found this useful. And thanks for watching.